Hello everybody, welcome back to another video here at Rule 1 Model Railways. Today we have the Revolution Trains N-Gage Class 321 to open. Stay tuned for more. So hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, if you like what you see today, subscribe and hit that like button for me. Thank you very much. Without further ado, we're going to open up our Class 321 in Engage. Let's have a look at what we got, shall we? Packaged well enough. Uh, bring you in a bit closer so you can see a bit more now let's open this up that's it that's the outer sleeve off there you are that's the packaging so far. It's very well packaged. We get our instruction guide, the manual. This is DCC sound, so the entirety of this should uh, apply. So it's safe for running in a maintenance. Once the model is copied up and on track, you are ready to go. Every train needs a running in period. Okay. There we are. So I take out one of our driving cars. See what they look like. Yeah. Not bad at all, is it? Alright, let's get the whole thing out and get it on the layout, shall we? Wow, okay, that's not good. What is going on there? All right, it seems the clips are not that strong. We'll have to see whether that affects running characteristics or not. But that wasn't good. Pantographs working. There we go, it's our intermediate car. And our last driving end. We get a coupling tool there and oh, some rapido couplings for the ends if you want to swap them over. We won't be doing that, so I've only got one. Let's go over to the track. So, today I have out Sarum Town for us to try this out on. I'm just going to place the coaches down gently just while we have a look and see how they all go on. So we'll start off with the driving car with the motor in it. We'll stick that down. Oh, that's rather pretty. A bit bright, but pretty. And then we'll have the uh, intermediate. We'll put the toilet in the middle. In fact, that should be on that side. See what they were saying about the coupling tool being required. Let's 
So it looks like you have to line them up together and then give them a squeeze. There. That's not easy. I'm sure it'll be worth it though. Lay this all on its side to couple them up, I'm afraid. Otherwise, they're just not going to couple without the tool. So, here we go. Getting there. That's it. I'm going to do the end here. Okay, I'm not so keen on that mechanism, but at least we're now all coupled. <laughs> making sound noises already. I haven't asked it to, but there we go. <laughs> Pantograph noise, brilliant. There we are, it's all on, so let's uh, get hold of that controller, shall we, and see what it does. I'm going to assume it's set to number three, so we'll go to number three. It'll go on number three, let's stick the lights on on the ends. Yep, yeah, they're on. So it should be going downhill. Let's set the points for down. There we are. This is the first run. Yeah, it runs quite nicely, doesn't it? Quite impressive, actually. Oh, it'll come off. And we've shorted everything brilliantly. So I've had to put it on the bottom level as it wouldn't do the um, the slope there, the, the transition between flat and up onto the slope. So I've had to put it on the bottom level. But we'll just see how it runs now. I've got the sound on, so let's see what it does. That's quite a nice one though, isn't it? Let's give it some speed now, see what it does at speed.
Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to unscrew the bogey slightly. They've got screws in the middle holding them on and see if that allows the bogey to drop far enough to hold onto the rails while we're going around the corners. Um, hopefully this does something. There, so it's a bit looser now so it can actually drop down. And I'll do that to all of them. And see whether that encourages it to stay on the track. I can't do it to the motor car because it hasn't got any. But hopefully if I do it to all the others, that will give us enough uh, articulation that it will stay on. The couplings cannot be adjusted, so this is it. If this doesn't work, it doesn't go. So we'll see what this does. Now I stick it back on. I'll have to be over. And we'll see what this does. No. Right, so we've found the problem on our Revolution Train 321. You see the coupling in there? They're locked in solid. They actually don't move, and they do sometimes, but they're not free at all. So that's um, the reason we're getting the issues. And just to make sure it wasn't just that coupling, it's the same on this one. So it's they're just stuck tight and on this end even it obstructs the bogey from turning as well so if that's moving to one side the bogey actually can't move right hopefully we'll get somewhere now running this um, been lots of issues with it so far I'll go through them first of all the end bogeys on the very end of the unit were tightened on too tight so the wheels couldn't rotate properly um, the bogies in between that and the motor car, I had to loosen them off just enough that the bogies can turn properly, but not too loose that the couplings come out because they're all secured in by the same screw. The third thing we had was one of the back to backs was incorrect, it was out by quite a way, and that was causing the unit to ride off the, off the rails. Um, any, any very slight track imperfections and over the top so it's causing derailments all the time and the third thing I've had to do in the fiddle yard area of this layout I've had to relay some of the track to get it to run reliably um, there's still a problem with one of the couplings it doesn't quite articulate properly so um, Eventually I just relayed some of the tracks so it doesn't have to turn so far the other way. This um, radius we're using at the moment, the very minimum is radius 2. The inside track is radius 1. So it should really be able to run around those being a, a modern unit with bogies rather than a, a steam engine with a set of say 10 wheels. So it shouldn't really be a problem for it but the couplings are and, and the screws hold the couplings in and the bogies in is proving a little bit problematic but hopefully now we've uh, got it all sorted I've given it a bit of a test there and it seems to work okay so I'm gonna let you hear some of the sounds instead now so first of all I turn the sound on That's the pantograph hitting the overhead line equipment. Got FT 
two and F three is the horn. Passenger doors are number four. We'll come back to them to close them in a minute. Brake application is number five or brake dump. Six is the driver's door open and close. F7 is one of my favourites, it's the compressor. That sounds spot on. F8 is the toilet pipe discharge. F9 is something that only works when it's moving, it's the uh, wheel and flange squeal. F10 is a dispatch whistle. Um, I don't actually know how to get it to do number 10 I'm afraid. Or anything above that so, well we've heard what we've heard so far. What we'll do, we'll close the doors now. And we'll get a move on. That sounds correct. The sound obviously turns off when it's coasting. Lovely AC overhead motor sounds. And then to stop. Don't quite want to stop there. Let's go a little bit further and we'll stop it. We've got the braking sounds as well. We'll bring it up to full speed. unit on full speed now. The thing about the flickering lights, how they're not, um, the power don't go through all the coasters to keep them on. But, uh, I think both of the compromises they've had to make it in again. And now we'll bring that to a halt. quite difficult to stop in the right place because of the uh, inertia settings are on quite uh, quite hard. The settings are quite high. But it does go like the real thing. There you are. One of the other things I really like about this unit is if you watch the lights they don't just turn off and on. 
when you change the direction, they sort of fade in and out, and I'll show you that now. You've got this nice fading effect, which I think is quite good. We'll zoom in and show you it even closer. There we are, so we'll just uh, do that again. I quite like that. I don't know if you can see when it's got the front lights on. The destination board also lights up up here as well, just on the top. That's quite a, a nice feature. So talking about detail, we'll have a look as it goes by now. But I think the detail on this unit is spectacular. It is really good. You can see the insides are painted green in the right places. All the underbody details are there. The roof detail is all there. The pantographs there. Um, the low floors in the driving car is very good. The model driving car that is. And. Uh, the cabins are done really, really well as well. So it's a definite win from me for the detail. It is very, very good. The only issue we're having is just the reliability. But I hope once it's run in a bit, that will improve in time.
Shh.